right. Hello, 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 hello. We are about to get really an epic party started. There's a lot of good things. So if you can uh, hear me and see me, that would be great. We'll do a little bit of a tech check. Let me know where you are calling in from. This, my friends, is going to be something new that I've never done before. And I'm very, very, very excited because we have, like, wait for it. The drum roll is coming. <sighs> Number one, we are going to be doing a question and answer kind of group coaching to give you a sneak peek on the inside of what we do on Social Curator, but also make sure that your questions are answered. So this right here is a conversation of things that I have noticed in the past week of showing up online. And I know there is this temptation for people to look at social media and think that to use it for your business, it is mm, a great thing. And it's a good thing. And sure, you want people talking back to you. And sure, you would like more followers. But I feel like in order for us to frame this conversation, the foundation of every single answer is, can my business use social media for sales? And that, my friends, is where I am going to part. I'm going to put my heels in the mud and I am going to answer every possible question as quickly as I can, but it will be rooted in the foundation of does social media help me with sales for my business? Because I am not in the business of making people feel good or feel popular or have like a warm and fuzzy effect when it comes to social media. What I want to do is ask if you have a clear plan for a steady stream of customers. That's what every answer is going to move back on. Can I get a yes and amen? So are we here? Like I would love to 100% ensure that we're on the same page. Yes and amen, I am ready to learn how social media can get customers in sales. That's 100% of how I'm going to frame this coaching because that is going to make it the most worth it for you. That's 100% where we are. Now, I have to say, I'm going to take a little bit of a second. And before I get into that, so if you would like to come on camera and, and, and ask your question, please raise your hand. You can click on the raise your hand button. That's going to indicate to the team that you want to come on camera and ask your question. You can also leave your questions in right here in the q and I'll make sure that we can see those because I'm going to be doing both. But I said that we're going to use this coaching to really focus on questions of can I use social media for sales and if so then how. I actually want to take a step back and really clean the slate for one thing that's super important to me and that is to frame the conversation around this one time that I had to, I chose to watch an online class and there somebody gave a presentation very similar to the presentation that you watched this past week, right? Like you and I, we've had multiple conversations around business. So I watched this online class and this guy who I've never met on the internet decides to teach us about building a business and a digital business. And I'm like, this guy, I, I want to be coached by this guy. And this is the first time I had ever watched an online class. And at the end he says, in order to be coached and join my program, it's going to be $25,000. And I, went, I was shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? That's the most freaking ridiculous thing that I've ever heard in my life. $25,000. I was so upset that I got my laptop and I slammed it shut. Now I was like, get behind me, Satan. There's no way that I'm going to spend $25,000 to get coaching. And then that night I fell asleep. And then the next morning, my husband and my business partner, he's like, you're going to invest in it, are you? And the question that I had asked myself was, if by signing up for this group coaching, do I think that I can think of an idea or a project or expand my business to make back the money that I had invested in it? And the answer I said was yes. I thought that by investing $25,000 with a coach that I would be able to come on and think of a new way of doing business. And I have to tell you that every time I have listened to my gut, even if it didn't make sense, it led me in the right direction. Not only by investing in this group coaching program did I make the $25,000 back, I made hundreds of thousands as a result of having a clear plan and a strategy. So I understand that I am not asking you to invest 25,000. 
Our group coaching program is $49 and the resources. But this conversation is focused around two things. Number one, can you use social media for sales? If so, how? Um, short answer is hell yes. Then we're also gonna be focusing on how can I really understand that the investment is an investment towards time. And that's what 100% I wanna get into today. Now I know I see Christina up on camera, but what I'm gonna do real quick as she is shushing her little baby in the background is there are three main questions. And these three, three main questions are going to be the thing that we focus on here today. Those three questions that we're gonna get into right now. Actually, I'm gonna start here. How about this for grounding? How about for the next 57 minutes, we focus on the reasons that social media could lead us to the sales that we want. That we could focus on the reasons that social media can get us the clients and customers that we want and not focus on any excuses we wanna give ourselves. Not COVID, not I don't know how, not I don't have money. Because in less than 10 minutes, I want to show you. I wanna work through you and let you know, number one is social curator for you. Number two, will social curator work for your business? And number three, how long is this thing going to take? But I'm going to need your help. And I already see that Christina is on because I'm going to be using your businesses as examples. So what I'm going to do is have Christina unmute yourself and ask a question for us. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, I have a question. So I- Christina, can you, speak a can you speak a little louder? Sure. Is this better? No. It is. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. I was trying to be cute and pop it, but I'm just clearly popping it on the mic. All right. So, of course he's going to talk as soon as I ask my question. Look forward to this. This is coming your way. <laughs> um, so, I'm a copywriter, and I'm moving from one-on-one -on -one retainer, uh, long-term clients, into doing more, like, coaching and doing more. I'm launching my first course in a couple of weeks. Um, so, the content has... I know as someone who's done this type of work for other people that I'm, I'm moving from how to hacks to kind of like transformation hacks. So people realize like why they need copy coaching um, or why they need to join my course or my membership. Um, but I'm still having a hard time creating that type of content. Like I don't really know what that transformation content would look like. Right. Cause I'm still stuck in like, Here's the copy hacks and the one-on-one, -on -one, and this is how you find your audience. I'm having a hard time building the content around them transforming, trans making that transformation that they need this instead okay. of copywriter. So, okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question, but I'm gonna give you my, my answer to the same question to give you a little bit of time to let it sit. Okay. What is the transformation that your dream customer wants? I'm gonna give you a second. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it in the framework of the transformation that the social curator dream customer wants is number one, I want to feel confident with my social media. Number two, I want my social media to lead me to customers and sales. And number three, I don't want to waste any more time. I feel like I'm wasting time. So I'm joining so, social curator to help me feel confident, to give me a clear plan for customers and to save time. Now, if you have carefully noticed that the post leading up to this launch has been around, guess what? I want more sales. I want more customers. I don't want to waste time, so give me a plan. So that's the transformation that I'm clearly speaking to. So now anybody else who's watching, I would love for you to write down what is the transformation? What is the, not the transformation, it's what does your dream customer desire? So as people are watching, what is your dream customer desire? Christina, I'm going to put that question back to you. So one of like the pain points is like getting copy that sounds like them, right? They want to, getting copy that sounds like them, getting their, um, they're building their audience and they feel like, they feel like they're ready to outsource copy, but they don't really know how to do it. So one of the pain points I'm, I, that I build around that is that benefits, <laughs> I build around that is, um, you know, you'll come out with a framework Hi. that if you do decide, you know, copywriting, Hiya. you still can't do it. Um, <laughs> copywriting still can't do it. It's my social media manager. Um, if you still feel like you can't do it, well, now you have a framework you can hand it off to someone because some of the people are like, can I just hire you? And I'm like, oh, I don't do that anymore. And it's like hard to say that because I'm like, okay, I'm, 
So then the I transformation. Know, but I'm, I know this is the way. Yes. So the transformation that you should be speaking to is how would it feel to have somebody understand your voice? How would it feel for somebody to write on your behalf? So you start speaking to their desire. I wish somebody can help me speak on social media in a way that makes sense. So you're going to speak to the transformation, the thing that they want. I want somebody to help build my business and speak just like me. And what you say is, oh, the missing piece is the system to help somebody understand your voice. So what you're selling is the systemizing of somebody understanding your voice. And the transformation is turnkey solutions to have somebody help build your business. So all of your social media content should be pointing to the idea of the freedom. What somebody wants is somebody to write copy that feels like them, that is their voice. And you're saying you can't have that transformation until you have the system. So the content should be in the transformation of building somebody who can help build your business. But what you're selling is the system and all of your content should be pointing to that specifically. Okay, got it. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I love that, Christina. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. And I believe that there is a way that you can talk about your business and the transformation and then having supplementary um, resources from Social Curator to make sure that you're showing up every single day. Because Christina, I don't know about you, but the cobbler's kids don't have shoes. I wonder how often are you showing up on social media to sell the transformation and not sell your future, your future course? So I wanna make sure that you're taking a step back and being like, if I'm committed to the transformation, then I need to show up and speak to the transformation every single day. Got it, yeah. Thank you, doll. I Thank you, I hope. But it's still copy hacks and that's why I'm still getting people to like, all right, write my copy. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want you to hear for. <laughs> and so all you're going to do is you're going to change your messaging and you're going to use the social curator resources to help you show up every single day. Okay. Thank you, doll. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. We're going to get into other questions. If y'all, if you guys, if you want to come on camera, raise your hand and then, uh, let's dive into a question. Um, if I, okay, great. Actually, let's go to Emily. Hi, Emily. All right. Word. Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. I'm happy you're here. What's your question? Me too. I just have to say I was on your webinar for uh, two days ago. I instantly implement, like literally, like I've done the calendar on my wall and I feel so good. <laughs> and so I implemented it yesterday and got the most engagement I have like almost ever gotten on a post. So thank you. I really uh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Oh. I love that. Uh. Sweet. So my question is, I have built a six figure online coaching business. I'm an anxiety coach. And the thing that I'm now finding, and I did it almost exclusively with podcast and Instagram stories. So I am now feeling burnout because I have to be on screen in order to like hype things up on the podcast or on people signing up for my coaching program. Um, I'm looking to change completely how I use my social media. Um, and that's why I was so attracted to, well, obviously I've been following you for a while. So, but um, I just love how you roll. I love how you built your business and I'm looking to actually step away and let social media do more of my work than me physically. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm curious when you bump up against a change or a strategy change, how do you navigate that? Okay, Emily. If I'm allowed to ask that, if I'm not, I totally understand. Oh, of course. I mean, this, this Q and A is to, understand how can we use social media to get a steady stream of customers and you're saying how can i use social media in a slightly different way now yes. and you're wondering what happens when you rub up against it and i'm going to say something that i think is going to maybe rub you the wrong maybe rub you the wrong so way. okay with that okay so i once heard describe that our superpowers like what we're really good at is what we can refer to as the golden egg it's like the the goose that laid the golden egg and whatever it is you do in your business, you should never walk away from the golden egg. That was the thing that got you to where you are. Yes. Okay. So if like you, I hear a very, like a lot of commonalities with us and what I want to do often, just like a lot of people is you get to burn out real quick on social media because it feels like a second full-time job. Yes. Okay. So if we're on the same page there and other people are nodding and saying, yes, that's me too. The reason why we created Social Curator was to alleviate part of the content creation pr 
process. But I'm gonna speak very clearly to you, Emily, and I am going to say, I believe that your presence is the golden egg. Yeah. And, okay, so you're nodding. So I'm like, okay, I think I'm tapping on something here. So mm -hmm. then that begs the question, which just like you rubbed against me in January, 2019, when I asked myself, what is it going to require for me to take my business to the next level? Yes. And I had to look at all the things I was doing. There were some things I loved doing and some things I didn't like doing. So on the list of things that I didn't like doing, I said, okay, I'm gonna have to hire somebody on my team because I built a system and now I'm gonna hand the system over to somebody to do something that I really don't like doing. Yep. And then there was a bunch of things that I really loved doing and I didn't wanna give them up. But choosing between building my business on social media and doing stuff that I loved, I realized that at this point in time, at this point in time, maybe in the future it's gonna change, at this point in time, there wasn't anyone better in the business to protect the golden egg than me. True, sister. And so Emily, I'm gonna tell you that I understand you wanting to take a step back, but I'm gonna invite you to take a step back by releasing some of the other things you love doing, but you can actually hire out to help you take it to the next level. And I will say that by bringing, at, bringing on a few key team members, mm -hmm. I have been, th this year, 2020, I have been on social media probably three times as much as I was on 2019. We have seen massive growth in the business as a result. But I feel like I'm not exerting more time and effort doing it because I have freed up other time in the business to focus on the golden egg. Now, I know everybody here is like, oh, she's so biased. Social media isn't my golden egg. And I'm like, listen, your golden egg is free. How could anybody not use social media to get more customers and a steady stream of followers and podcast guests and live classes? So Emily, how are we feeling right now about this pretty strong advice in something different than what you actually asked? Excited. I Good. feel like everything happens. Like obviously I was meant to be here. Obviously I was meant to ask you that question. Obviously it needed to come through and that just excites me, especially Good. seeing you do it too. I think that's a thing that us women entrepreneurs don't get to see a lot is actually how women handle their six, seven figure businesses. So thank you for being an amazing example. I'm excited to join the community. Oh, uh, Emily, I can't wait. Girl, you, I want you to connect with um, a member. Her name is Macy Gilson. She was actually a member. She was on my podcast. She does um, um, inclusion, inclusion for children with disabilities. You guys are in different fields, mm -hmm. but your energies are like, I don't know why I feel this, but like get on the inside of the community. We're going to have our Facebook admin connect the two of you because you need to meet Macy. I think cool. there's something magical there. So I'll see Thank you on you. the inside. Thank, Thank you. you. See you on the inside. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that right there, y'all, um, my superpower is connecting people. Like I love connecting people. I get a high off of it. I was like, oh, y'all are going to make some magic. So this is what we do on the inside of the community. We just connect people. This is how we roll. I believe, I believe Chad is next. Um, but I don't see Chad on camera. So Chad, we're going to give you about three seconds. And then if it's not Chad, we're going to move on over to three, two. Oh, Chad is Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Hey. Hi. Hi. What's your question, doll? Um, I have not been posting at all. So is this something that I just stopped like a month ago and I just don't know if it's something that I should start like all at once doing all of this, the social curator with like, I don't know, like, and then also can I drive, use the pictures from the business side and my personal page and post on my personal page with the pictures to drive people to my other page? So can I ask a question to the first question, just a clarifying question. If you're like saying, I'm not sure if I should do this like all at once. What, 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 why do you think you should not do it? What's something that comes up for you? I just don't want, I don't know. I just don't want it to be like all in your face all at once. Does that, I don't, does that make sense? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So anybody who feels like Jessica and who feels like I'm going to be too much for some people, okay? So Emily is saying, yeah, that's me. And also Erin, she's saying, yes, that's her. So you're not alone. But I'm going to speak to something that I've seen very clearly is that 
you will be too much for some people. If you are posting every day or if you're not, you will be not enough for some people if you're posting every day or you're not. You are not avocado toast and you are not Nutella and you are not a cup of cinnamon tea the day before Christmas shopping begins. All those things make everybody happy. You are not here to make everybody happy. You are here to stand in your purpose. Because Jessica, there is a reason you started a business. And every time you cover your light, you're robbing God and the universe of what you're supposed to spread. So you could sit here and say, I'm gonna be too much for people, but you're gonna be too much if you don't post or if you post. And people's opinions of you, that doesn't pay your bills. Jessica, customers pay your bills. And the way you get customers is by showing up online in the good, the bad, the ugly. And it takes just as much energy, just as much for you to say, I'm going to show up too frequently in somebody's feed, which is just, just a story you're telling yourself. That's just a story. Because it takes just as much energy for you to say, somebody needs to read the thing that I am sharing. And Jessica and anybody else who feels like I'm posting too much or I am too much. Before I got on this call, I went to Instagram and I posted yet again because we are in a sales open enrollment period for social curator. And I too, Jessica, felt like it's another post. But instead of thinking about me and my feelings, I thought there is somebody in the world who has a business and has no idea how to use social. And I believe that by joining this community, not only is their business gonna change, but their life is going to change. If I am so afraid to press the publish button, I'm robbing the other person whose life was supposed to change. So Jessica and anybody else who feels like you're too much, the answer is you are and you aren't. You don't know until you put it out. And when you serve others and you move your ego out of the way and your fear and your doubt, your business changes. That is the only way you're going to drive results. Mommy. And the second question is, if you have two accounts, if you are the owner of both accounts, you can use the photos on your business account and your personal account to move traffic to your business account. Yes. And then one other question. So I'm a graphic designer and I make um, laser cut items. So like I started making earrings just because it was popular and now I'm moving on to like large signage and custom signage. So should I completely drop the earrings or just show both? Because I think you're going to have a hard time trying to show both because the, 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 the shopper who wants the earrings is very different than the shopper who wants the signage. And if you've said like, hey, my new direction is signage, I would move quickly in the signage direction to build the following that wants the signage. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Show up. The world is waiting to see you, your business, and your signage. Thank you. Thank you, doll. Thank you. Uh, up next is Grant. Grant, what's up? How are you, Jasmine? So good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Grant. Can you speak up a little bit? I don't know if it's on my end. How, are we all hearing, Grant? Yeah, I can just turn on my game a little bit on my mic to help a little oh, bit. Oh, see? Grant coming in with a fancy mic. Okay, yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, I am so thankful for all your help so far. You know, I was one of those people that before joining Social Security, I had doubts that it wasn't going to be for me because my business was like, you know, financial planning, investment management stuff. And people don't just like buy on a whim with that. It's a relationship that you have to build. And what amazing relationships that I've been able to build on social media with people by showing up every day with the content and the information that you make it easy to do. So I'm super grateful um, with that, my question is, we're continuing to show up in other areas. We have our blog and our podcasts and our videos and things. What's the best way that you recommend to leverage uh, social curator content so that we can get more eyes on our content, on our blog, on our video, on our podcast? How, how do we leverage what you're doing with social curator to get more people to see our other content? So we come back, and this was actually from the... Um, the January 2018 issue of Social Curator, we talk about stumble upon marketing and searchable marketing. 
And so what we do, and this is, we talk about the pillars of content is we will write, let's say a blog post, or we will have a video. Those are two kind of long form. And what we'll do is we'll put it into a blog post and we'll use social curator images. You will see this on jasminestarblog.com and you will see this on jasminestarpodcast.com. We follow the same methodology is where we'll create a grid or a really pretty graphic that offers the benefits immediately. Not a pretty photo just for a pretty photo. We're saying what you get and what you learn. And then we want to make sure that we can use those pins on Pinterest because Pinterest is one of the top five search engines is we want to make sure that we have the Jasmine star pin and we're putting those pins in there and making them shareable. So what happens is the way that we're growing the podcast audience is if somebody's going in and in your case, looking for financial services, how do I refinance is refinancing a good time right now? How has COVID changed refinancing? And you're making all of these pins that are sizable, optimized for Pinterest from a blog post and from a video. So what we'll do for the podcast is we record the audio and we also record a video both of those things are going into a blog post so that we can put it in YouTube. So people searching for, in your case, refinancing financial services and searching in Pinterest for those things. And also we have it on the blog, search engine optimization. Those three things, Grant, have been all for new eyes. And it has been such a game changer for us. And not even, well, actually, it's a year today. We launched a Jasmine Star podcast today a year ago so just to see how the strategy has really skyrocketed the downloads has been a game changer that's awesome super awesome advice i'm so grateful for social curator and even getting a chance to go on these webinars the last information that you gave me about hey just show up have a business account start paying now because the economy is changing and you better do it now before it gets super expensive that's been huge for us. And it's gotten a lot of eyeballs on our content already. So thank you so much. You're awesome, Jasmine. Appreciate it. Grant, Grant, nothing but love. Thank you, homie. Thank you. Right. Y'all, right. that's Grant. He's a member of the community. And he's just a, he's one of those people who aren't exactly flashy, but he just does the work and we see the needle moving in his business. So thank you, Grant. Like, that's amazing. Okay. So let's go into another question we're trying to get through. <laughs> Somebody's asking if Grant is single. <laughs> Y'all, let, let me just tell you, I will not, I thought everyone's laughing. Okay, let's go up into um, uh, Samantha. Hi. 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 Uh, hi, Jasmine. I make uh, stickers and stationery for journalers and pen pals. And so it's a very product-based business. Uh, I've got probably over 100 items. I run an Etsy shop. And I'm trying to figure out how to integrate things other than pictures of products into my feed on Instagram. And I'm just not sure how to do that well. So um, for a product-based business, it's very good that you have a strong foundation of photos of your products. But a lot of times as a way to stick out from other people who do or sell something very similar is I'm going to go back and say it again, is that Simon Sinek says people don't buy what you sell. They buy why you sell it. So Samantha, people want to know your why. And you might say, okay, I want to share my why, but how? And the answer is you don't know until you've tested a variety of things. And the good news is that Mark Zuckerberg and the gods that be at Instagram have allowed you to become a videographer with nothing but your mobile device. So what you can do, Samantha, is you can, I'm going to give you three courses of action, three courses of action. Number one, I, um, do you have an iPhone or do you have an Android? iPhone. So then when you open up your camera app, you're going to click on the time lapse and you're going to, you're going to put up your phone. You're going to set it up on a tripod or against a stack of books. And you are simply going to show people how you are packaging up your goods to mail them out to a customer. And then you talk about what your customer means to you. That's one post. The second post, what you're going to do is you're going to create an Instagram reel. Have you created reels yet before? Uh, I've created a TikTok and shared it to reels. Okay, great. That's a perfect start. So you know that you're not completely foreign to it, but this is going to be an advice that I'm going to say, make sure that your reel feels native to mm -hmm. reels and not with the TikTok logo on it. Mm -hmm. So on the Inside of Social Curator for the month of November, we're having a group challenge. We're all going to be doing reels. We're all going to be measuring our success. And we have a 27 minute tutorial on the strategy of reels, not just a how to. So mm -hmm. I want 
first and foremost to do the time lapse, talk about your customers mean to you. Then you're going to be doing a reel and you're going to be focusing on the top question. People wonder, do people still have pen pals? Mm -hmm. And your TikTok, I mean, your reel could be, do people still have pen pals? And all you have to do is be like, you don't have to be 12. You, and then you can just dress up as different characters. You can have mm -hmm. a ball. And then the third piece of content that I would like you to test, which drives people a little bit crazy, is for you to use Instagram Live or Facebook Live. And you're going to answer just the three questions that people often ask when it comes to running your Etsy store and who actually is the type of customer that you should have. And you're going to feel awkward and you're going to sweat in areas of your body that you didn't even know existed. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. People are going to see you. I know stuff just comes to me. I make people uncomfortable when I talk. It doesn't even matter. But people are going to see you and say, I want to buy her why. Not necessarily mm -hmm. your sticker. Mm -hmm. Once they get behind you, they're just going to want to support you. And that's what social media does. People are like, I don't get why. I don't get the how of social. And all we preach is use the social curator methodology because it works, period. Test, mm -hmm. reassess. Test, reassess. People buy your why, show the why. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Thank you. I've... I tried doing live once and I didn't really know what I was doing. So it was two and a half minutes of awkwardly talking at a camera. No one was looking at, but, but I knew I needed to do it again. So here's the thing, Samantha, is that on the inside of social curator, we hold your feet to the fire. This is about accountability. The first time you rode a bike, you were not riding the tour de France. And the first time you did your multiplication tables, you weren't Einstein. And the first time you spoke a foreign language, you weren't proficient. All of a sudden, we hold ourselves as business owners to this invisible standard that the first time I do something, I'm going to be perfect and hundreds of people are going to show up. And the answer is, you're crazy if you think that's mm -hmm. your reality. I went live on Instagram and Facebook for months with nobody showing up. And it was awkward. And I thought about like the girls in high school who probably had opinions on opinions about why I was showing up and you just felt awkward and you just feel like you didn't even matter. And guess what? The only way you matter is if you say, number one, I'm here to serve an audience. Number two, I'm going to have the humility to continue practicing so I can get more customers to my business. That is it all day, every day. Yeah, that's so helpful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Samantha. I totally, totally appreciate you. And I hope to see you on the inside of Social Curator. Thank you, Dolph. Thank you, Thanks. thank you. Okay, let's get into a couple of the pre-asked questions. I wanna make sure that people... Um... Okay, so uh, Catalina Leon asked, my concern is how the photos and content customizable to each business. Now we've done this, we've done this before. I had somebody come on and she owned a boutique and she also had a coaching business. And so I was thinking, okay, what great way for us to actually, um, let me dive into this. Okay, so people are asking, how is it could be, how can it be customized? So what you're looking at right now is the inside of Social Curator. This is the October issue. When you join today, this is 100% of what you would be getting. Now, we have Social Curator categories. These are things that have been proven to work extraordinarily well. And so what we want to really focus on is how can we customize a piece of content according to our business? Oh, hold on. Am I on the internet? Crap. Hang on one second. Um... Okay. Oh, sorry guys. I should have was ready. There it is. So when you join today, what you're getting is not just one issue. You'll get two issues. Surprise, surprise. Maybe that's the good thing about walking through this demo. Um, okay. So we went back here and we're talking about customizing content. Now, what our objective is to do is to follow the HIC formula in Social Curator, the hook, insights and call to action. We want to make sure that people are number one, engaging with your content. And we do this by making sure people feel connected. So while even if you won't be using this photo, you can customize each of these captions to ensure that it's for your business. We want to hook somebody in. True or false, one person can make a huge impact. Terry, Aaron, Amitza, Olivia, they might all answer those questions very differently. But what we are trying to do is start the conversation by putting options there for people. Now you could say, uh, I also believe in the power of one. To prove my point, here's what people had to say about, and then we go to your product or service. Now we could, we could have 
eight different companies. You could sell essential oils, you can make dog collars, you can have jewelry, you can be a chef. And all you have to say is, this is what people said about my product. And then we say, share one to three customer reviews. That right there is the quickest way to make the caption entirely your own. So when it comes to actually customizing the content, the content is only customizable. This isn't a one size fit all. So we wanna make sure that we're showing up in those big ways. Um, I believe Erin, you're next. Hi. Hi. Hey there. So um, it's really awesome to be on here with everybody, but I had a question because I'm a multi-passionate person, like extremely, and it's gotten to where, and you kind of just touched on this a few seconds ago, but when you're trying to like narrow down the categories for like, I run multiple pages for my clients and for myself. And so now it's like all these categories, it's just super overwhelming trying to like narrow them down. Like during the masterclass the other day, talking about finding those few categories to talk about, mm -hmm. it almost seems like really when I'm looking back at my feed, it just came across as a lot of random topics kind of pinpointing everywhere. Um, and I guess trying to make it more cohesive, like what would you recommend as far yeah. as? So whenever I talk to multi-passionate entrepreneurs, the first question I have is, I, I want you to be passionate about what it is you do, but I also want you to pay your bills. And we use social media to actually get customers and clientele. So my business, I mean, my question then, Erin, is what is your business? Like, how are you trying to use social media to make money? So <laughs> that's the the main part is that I'm in the process of kind of trying to step back from, I started an agency and now I have team members working with me. I want to get them more so situated with managing the social media accounts of the clients so that I can manage my, you know, my pages, my business and kind of to just oversee everything. So it's just kind of that adjustment. Okay. So Erin, it is that adjustment, but number one, it, this became very clear. Now that I know your objective, is the idea is to build the Aaron brand. That you need to focus on showcasing who you are, what you do, AKA your expertise, and why you do it. And then be very open with the fact that you work with a team because your objective is simply to get as much attention on social media so that you can funnel it out to your team. Your objective is not to be liked or the most popular. Your objective <laughs> is to give the most value and benefits to prospective customers. All you have to do is be like, this is the brand of Aaron. This is the digital agency. And then you've got to show people just how good you are at what it is you do. And a lot of that, to get more customers, you have to show your customers what you actually do. And if you say to your customers, I can help you get more followers and more customers, guess what, boo-boo? You got to do it first. You got to show up every single day. You need to be on stories. You need to be implementing the advice that you're giving to your customers. So your sole right. objective is to show up every single day and you need to have a plan for that and you need to have accountability for that and that happens on the inside of social curator because what happens is right now we're on a high everybody's like oh my god i feel so good i watched the class i have a <laughs> calendar ready right and then next thursday you wake up and you're just like i don't know if i can do it another week and it's like, I just, right. I've seen it so many times that I'm like, at what point are we all going to say, stop faking the funk? Like if I haven't right. done it, if I haven't done it now and I've been doing it on my own, there's a good chance that in order for me to take it to the next level and get the customers I want, something has to change. And we have discovered that the thing that has to change are when you show up and you do it with a group of people with a clear plan and you got to show up every day. That's just it. Yeah. Thank you. So Erin, I want you to step into the power and the brand that is Erin and not say, I'm really excited and have a come to Jesus moment. You got to say like, I'm changing my <laughs> life to get the thing that I want. Yeah. It's easy to do it when you're looking at someone else's business because it's super easy to like help them showcase their face. Yeah. Our own faces are not as always easy to show off. So yeah, that makes sense. Well, you got a good face, so show it off. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I to see you on the inside of Social Curator, doll. We I can't you. wait to see you. Thank you, babe. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get into um, our next one, and I believe it is Amitza. Hey. Hi. Hi. I was so, uh, hi, hello, everybody. I was so excited when, you know, I shared, I don't know if you remember, there's probably a lot, but I was so moved by, like, feeling connected and touched that I wrote something like, God wants you to take care of yourself, like, unconditional love. I love you. And I, I shared that, and I felt really 
moved by like your presence. And so I appreciate you first for that. Um, and secondly, where I, what I'm dealing with is that I know myself and my brand as a Mitsa, as someone who has a wide range, right? I'm someone who have, like I've been acting and singing and dancing, a performer. My income has been through teaching and I have trained as a transformational coach, but like the things that inspire me that I wanna post my topics, I feel like they are all, I have it like they're all over the place. And so my concern is like, what, how am I, like how, how to honor my authentic inspiration and topics and message that to like, streamlined to the business, which is offering the, the life coaching and the consulting, right? Okay. So do you okay. follow that? <laughs> yeah, I do. So I'm going to repeat back what I think I heard, and then you can co-sign whether or not I got it. Yeah. Okay. You are a life coach and you want more customers, but you have a tendency to talk about a lot of stuff and you're not sure how it points back to getting customers as a life coach. Great. Right. So my first answer, so I always feel like I have, I'm part, I'm 50% holy and 50% hood, right? So the holy part of me is just like, go on boo-boo, you could do it. Show up as your true self. And I love that. And that is truly what I say. But the hood part of me is just like, but Amita, do you want to get customers? And if the answer is yes, then you need to put all of your passion and love on an account that is 100% free form expression, expecting nothing of monetization. And on your business account, you're going to have to say, I can talk about everything, but does everything get me my objective? So give me an example, actually, uh, give me an example of something you recently, in the past two weeks, you've spoken about and you're like, I'm not sure if this points back to my life coach business. So the, and it's helpful to hear that because I have a personal account and then I have this business account. Um, and I'll tell you this, but where I get stuck is where I have all the followers right now is on the personal account. So I get, you know, the, the crossover. Um, I, you know, like, it's just, it's like, it, whether it's like when I, you know, because as income, I do work with young kids, a young kid draws something of me dancing and I'm like, this is so sweet, so cute. And it's me dancing and showing my creativity or whether it's the fact that I'm directing a global Zoom showcase, you know, coming in a few weeks and I just ran auditions. So if I zoom out, I see I am being honored by people in the world for creativity. The young kids love the Zumba I'm teaching. The, you know, I'm excited to share that I'm casting, um, you know, for a multicultural show. And I, thanks to life coaching, I was able to tune into that creativity. Okay. But that's, a, that's why to zoom out that far, right? You oh, know? No, 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 it's not. Like I hear this and my mind's like, boom, 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 boom. Our yeah. object as business owners using social media is how do we use social media to get customers? If we cannot connect the dots for our followers, why they should be customers, they will never be customers. So let's give an example of the child who drew you dancing and you're like, I'm not sure that belongs on my business account. And I'm saying, Amitza, work harder because it does. So you post the picture and then you say, a child drew me dancing. When is the last time we gave ourselves the permission to explore without judgment the way that a child looks at us? In my transformational coaching, all I want people to do is to own their self-worth and not care what other people think. These are the transformations that I give and this child gave it to me. What transformations can I help you with today? Mm -hmm. Now we're doing casting, right? So you're saying this might not have anything to do with coaching, but in a way that it does, because as I cast, what were you casting for? Is it a play? Is it a show? What yeah, it's a global showcase folk and specifically for the voices for black indigenous people of color. Like we are rising high to tell those stories. So no, all, you're all like, oh my God, you're like, oh, the 30,000 foot view. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because the voices that have been wildly underrepresented are looking for a place and a space and you get to highlight their stories. So for people who are black, white, Asian, Haitian, Croatian, indigenous, brown, and they want a transformation, they're having it on a stage and 
you get to do it with your clients who are black, white, Asian, Haitian, Croatian, indigenous, black, and brown, you do the same thing. This right here is the convergence of real Amitza and businesswoman Amitza. This is what we do on the inside of Social Curator. The reason why your personal account is bigger is because you fun and you interesting. And the reason why the self-coaching one is probably not as growing as fast because there's a lot of hard right hooks. Dance like no one's watching. Sign up for a webinar today. And it's like, nobody really cares about that. People want to see, can you connect the dots for me? Because I want to see you. And I want to see the promise and the transformation. If we don't show that, we will not get customers. And that's why in Social Curator, all we do is point to the social of social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think I, I really like, I really appreciate that because I'm wondering, so I met, I heard about the templates and the pictures, but when it comes to that writing to that, so. Oh. Okay, Amitza, I think you went mute. I think you went mute. But I think it's so funny because I think when she's saying when you zoom out, like she probably wasn't going to use the photos, but she felt like the caption templates were going to be helpful. Amitza, did I hear you right? Oh, dang. Oh, dang. We lost her. We lost her. But Amitza, it's all good, girl. It's happening for, it's happening for us. That's right. I'll see you on the inside of Social Curator. Sign up, use those templates. Okay, let's move on to the next person. I have a hard stop in 15 minutes. So I'm gonna get through as many as possible. I have to stop at three though for an appointment. Okay, let's dive into, um, let's go into uh, Tuesday. Is Tuesday here? Three, two, one. I'm here. Okay, come on doll. Okay, what do I do? Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, what's your question? I, I must, okay. So similar to the young lady that just left, um, I just started a personal page, but ultimately my why is I want to help people in a way that I never was able to get help. And so although I'm a colorist and I have a hair salon, um, I, uh oh, hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. so um, I have a hair salon. I'm a colorist. That's my larger following. Um, but I would get people constantly asking, they want to see more of me. So I started going live to your suggestion because I was in co social curator before and I dropped out because I wasn't doing the work because I felt overwhelmed. And I'm like, I'm going to come back to her once I'm like really ready. So um, I wanted to teach color classes specifically because that is what my specialty is. That's what my niche is. That's what everybody in my town knows me for. But when I started going live to test things out, as you had suggested, to hear what people wanted to know from me, Although they were fabricated or excited about learning my color techniques and strategies, formulations, color theory, whatever, I was getting more business questions. And so I did not realize how many little systems that I do actually have in place. But as I'm answering their questions, I'm realizing I'm kind of saying the same stuff over and over again. These are my systems. Mm -hmm. These are the things that a lot of people are missing. And although I'm not excited about necessarily teaching business per se, I like to do, like you said, I like to teach the color and the color theory. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing your numbers and knowing how to properly price things um, and those pillars that you talk about having the three different pillars. So now I've gotten people asking, can I mentor them? And I'm just like, oh, you're pulling me further and further away from what I want to do, but I want to teach you both. But I'm finding that I'm getting more people needing help with business acumen. And then they'll finally want to ask me the questions about color. So I moved to the personal page so that I could stop posting things on my business page about my personal because I felt like when I was posting me it was detracting from why I had the page to begin with and then I started a, a education page okay which I don't really post on okay hold on hold on hold on hold on okay I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here because what okay. I think I hear you saying is mm -hmm. people are asking more business questions than color theory questions. And yeah. I'm a colorist. And what really lights me up is teaching about coloring. Correct? Yes. Yes, and you're correct. not even quite sure if you want to teach the business, but that's what people have been asking for. Do I hear right. that correctly? Yes. Okay. So Tuesday, you and I, we got a lot in common. And I'm so <laughs> happy you came on because you said, I joined Social Curator, but then I got really overwhelmed. And I said, I'm going to come back when I'm not overwhelmed. We're in the same situation. Your followers are saying, I'm going to get to color theory, but first I got to get my business off the ground. And right. so I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, please do exactly what I did. Because at the end of the day, I got, I was 
teaching the same lessons again and again. And I realized, oh, it's because I have a system, but I haven't laid out the system. And right. I don't really want to monetize on creating a course to teach a system. So what we did, this is uh -huh. different. This is brand new. What you're looking at right now is the social curator. Guess what it's called? The social curator system. System, I right. Need to, I need to make sure that people know this is your dream customer. We have a workbook for this. When it comes uh -huh. back down to understanding what are your social media categories? Because I kept on teaching it. Here's a five minute lesson for that. All of this comes right. for our new members to say, I don't know where to begin. So if you aren't really vibing with the business stuff, but you know that it'll lead them into the thing you actually want to talk about for right. you, it's color theory. For me, it's like, how do you get customers? But we right. can't talk about how to get customers until you get the left foundation. When you add the foundation as the entry point to the thing you actually want to do, you have a longer right. opportunity. Because the thing I don't want, which I see a lot of, is people will say, well, I can make money and this is what people want, so I'll do this. But then you actually don't really like it. Right. And life is too short to do something that you don't really like when you already have a successful business. Right, exactly. So you can create an evergreen system that answers frequently asked questions that, guess what? point back to the thing you really want to do. And that's color right. theory by way of a course, by way of accessibility, by way of a membership. So that's my advice. Don't get caught yeah. up in what you can make with right now. What do you want to do? Then reverse engineer how to get people in through the door and systematize that. Yes. And that's the question. I need help trying to fix, systematize that because I know it makes sense to, I can teach to a larger audience if I'm having classes online right? Versus, although I prefer the one-on-one, -on -one, I prefer the personal touch, even like with your social curated class, I wish I could pay you to come and sit with me face to face so that we can walk through that because I learn better that way. Yeah. But I recognize that people learn differently. And so I'm yeah. trying to teach to a bunch of people who, who process information differently. But as far as scaling mm -hmm. and making more money, I know that I'm going to be able to reach more people charging them less yep. for a course that is repeated where I've recorded it once, but million people can watch it over and over again. But I'm getting a lot of face to face. Exactly. The difficulty becomes is like, Tuesday, you want the, you want the in-person face to face, but you want to make sure that it's worth your time and money for that. Yeah. And the way that you weed that out is on the front end. You're like, I don't know how to do the system. Yes, you do. Right. Everything you know about business and the questions that you ask, you put up your laptop, you record videos that are free, and then you put them out on a blog that is free. You can put them, you can do zoom calls and you record them. And then you put them up on YouTube and you just put it all in a PDF. Here are all the links to the videos that I talked about to talk about the color theory that then you sell your course and for people right. who go through the course and they want to invest with you on a higher level that's when you sell them the one-on-one -on -one. tuesday the thing you need to do is just do the work right now you just mm -hmm. get the heavy stuff out so you can monetize on the stuff that you really want to do which is color theory okay and so the last question is with me now having these three pages mm -hmm. now i have the salon page i have my personal page and i have this savvy color academy page so i separated them so that the information wasn't overwhelming because i felt like i was putting a lot out on my business page so is it necessary to have the three different pages and should i make sure that i'm posting on each one of them every day well whatever account you want to grow my suggestion is to post every single day are all three necessary i don't know because i don't know your business enough and i don't know the customer enough right chances are like if you're not really interested in growing your personal page then you don't need to post on it every day it's just like whenever you yeah. feel inspired to now if yeah. you think that the customer is the same for the business and the colorist then maybe you don't need two accounts but you just have to understand who is the customer and what content do they want to see if it's the same content keep it on less accounts if it's different content then you know your answer okay okay that works thank you so much i need to pay you what is your, your price i need you to come here in baltimore maryland i need to sit with you one-on-one -on -one. baby baby it's too expensive honey it's too expensive <laughs> and the reason why i could say this tuesday is because we systematize the front end right. i know that i can't meet with all the tuesdays even though we would have we would tear up maryland like we just would right like we would right. make a scene and we would record it all we put it on social and we'd create a coup Yes. But the thing then becomes, that's not scalable. I want exactly. you to get more customers and make money when you sleep. And social media is built for that kind of stuff. So queen, okay. right? Everything you know, build the system, build them into the funnel. And when somebody pays you to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, it is worth your dang time. Right. Makes sense. Thank you. Right. I'll see you on the inside of Social Curator. Come on back. Okay. Okay. Bye. Right. Bye. Have a good one. Okay. So we have, we have six 
We have six minutes. Olivia, can we do this, Queen? Can we do this, Queen? We can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so happy. You're here. I'm so Hi. happy. You're here. What is your question? <laughs> Oh, my question is I'm trying to work out what my next move is. I'm also a hairdresser, so I wrote Tuesday's name down. I'm going to look up her okay. Savvy Color Academy. Um, but, yeah, I started with, um, with Social Curate, Curator in January. And um, at that time, I just had a mobile wedding hair business. And then I, with, when the pandemic hit, I ended up quitting my job, and I'm just a mobile hairdresser. Um, and that's gone really well um, since then. I'm... I'm just making money, which is great. I kind of, my plan was to take on my clients and then kind of go after a higher clientele as well. Like I live in a, I live in like the ghetto of a nice area. <laughs> so, um, I was, and I tried sort of advertising around. Um, I went, I made these little boxes that were really cute with some samples and I made a, um, a thing with my face on it and price service list and stuff and, and um, had a nice bow on them and, and handed them around and I didn't get any <laughs> response. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also like was trying to find them, my, these, these clients on um, social media, on Instagram, but it's so local. Like I really want to be able to walk to most of my clients' homes. Like I have a daughter Got at it. school and Got it. my business is super local. So there's that. And that anyway, so I haven't really been able to find this, higher clientele to tap into that market but my clients that I have I'm making enough money I've got so much free time in my hands like it's great I've been doing all these random things I've been taking singing lessons I did stand-up comedy the other week um I'm just so what is the like, question how, how <laughs> right, sure yeah sure I know so um I'm just trying to work out what my next move is basically. And uh, yeah, I just am so multi-passionate. Um, my Instagram as well, it's just, it's like an expression of my art, really. Like it's not really about hair. It's just about me. Do you it's want just... more, do you want more local customers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I also, so, yeah, I just want like creative ways to make money. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is yes. I can't answer creative ways for you to make money. I yes. can answer how to get more customers on social right. media. Let's do it. Because that's what we focus on, on the inside mm -hmm. of Social Curator. Yes. In the July issue, we had a whole issue dedicated to hashtags. Mm -hmm. And this is a hashtag strategy that was so specific, amazingly, for local-based businesses. Because mm -hmm. what we wanted you to do is to itemize local places that you think your dream customer hangs out. So mm -hmm. Olivia, you can go to, I, I probably in your neck of the woods, similar here, there is a coffee shop that has, that is in a very prominent pricey area. So mm -hmm. if I were you and I was a hairstylist and I wanted to pick up luxury clients, I would go to the geo tag of that coffee shop and see who's leaving comments. Mm -hmm. I would go through and anybody who had an open profile, because it's a local based cafe, there's a likelihood that if they were there, Mm. They're local. And I would go and I would just like and leave comments. All mm. you ha all Olivia has to do is to be the hairdresser mayor of your neighborhood. So you're going to look mm. at local schools, mm. coffee shops, restaurants, high-end bars. And all you're going to do, because you have all this free time, is you, instead of paying money to make boxes and tie bows, you're going to go out and you're going to be the best representation mm -hmm. of Olivia, the traveling hairstylist. And you're going to call yourself and on the inside of Social Curator, which is what we talk about in this issue, is defining your boss bio. If I got a random message in my DMs, which I often get, and somebody says, hey, Jasmine, I noticed that you were at Kit Coffee. I'm a hairstylist. What's the first thing I would do? Go to the profile and see what this person is about. In your boss bio, you have to make sure, this is what I do, this is who I am, and I serve a luxury market. And then your feed needs to support your thesis. Because if you are going after a luxury client, they're going to say, number one, I have to invite a stranger into my home. Number two, I have to trust the stranger with one of like, what women find a value uh, and beauty, hair. So mm -hmm. in my home, dealing with my hair and you're a stranger, you have to make sure that your social media goes through and you explain behind the scenes. I'm driving, I'm walking up, this is my setup. You have to show that you're wearing a mask and that's like a big thing for you. Then you say, this is how I set up. This is how I disinfect my tools. All your mm -hmm. content has to do is showcase how you serve a luxury target client and how you get their attention is simply by going and engaging with their accounts. I have a challenge for you if you're up for it. All right, I got, I got my pen and paper. Give me okay. the challenge. Okay, so the challenge is 
And, it, and the good news, Olivia, is that you, mm -hmm. can, you can spend as much or as little time as you would like mm -hmm. doing it. So one thing that uh, we have to let everybody know is that on the inside of Social Curator, when you click on the dashboard, when you join, mm -hmm. you don't get one, you get two issues. If mm -hmm. you're a member already, these are already added there. And then for you, as a bonus, what was announced was 30 Instagram stories. What mm -hmm. I want you to do, Olivia, is every single day for the next 30 days, you already have your stories done for you. And you mm -hmm. might say, Jasmine, I don't know how, what to say as a hairstylist. So you have this template with the text on it, and then you have a template that's empty. And what you could say is, are you tired of bedhead in quarantine? And then what you can have on another one is to customize, is just like, are you willing to go to a salon? And on this side, you're saying, driving 20 minutes, waiting, making small talk. And on this side, you're saying, comfort of your own home, wear mm -hmm. yoga pants, the kids can be playing on their iPads with you. And then you can say, are you ready for your hair, uh, for me to do your hair, I'll bring iced coffee. So mm -hmm. all you're doing is you're using these resources to contextualize what it is that you're doing. And so here we have another template that says like personal insight. You could use that or you could say, have you scheduled your agenda today for your haircut? I normally mm -hmm. see my in-home clients four to five weeks, are you there? And then you could say, it's as easy as one, two, three, send me a DM or you can ring me here or like my Facebook page. And then you can say, again, something of anything you want. Enjoy a cup of coffee while you get your hair done. So the challenge is for you to use stories to contextualize your business. That is one of the bonuses that you're a member, you'll already be there. And then what I want you to do is to spend however much long you have, five minutes, 55 minutes to go to geotags. That means that you're going to be going, uh, make a list of the bars, make a list of um, the schools, the coffee shops. Then you go and you like and leave comments. And I promise you, the more you go out and give engagement, mm -hmm. the higher likelihood that it's going to result in a customer. It just works. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much, Olivia. I totally appreciate you. Um, I know that I have a, <clears throat> I have a hard three o'clock stop because I have a meeting, but I also have to let everybody know that there's so much good stuff that is going on and not for anybody to be unaware. We close enrollment tomorrow at 5 p.m. Joining today, you get a social media launch kit. This is anything you want to promote on social media. You have the clean, clear path to do it. We give you the captions and the resources to talk about sales. You don't get one, but you get two issues of Social Curator. I just walked Olivia through the 30 Instagram stories. Y'all, a whole month of stories done for you. This right here is how you customize to drive engagement. And we brought back a surprise bonus. For anybody who's interested, you join by tomorrow, 101 caption templates. Now you have nothing to ever say, I don't know what to say on social media. All this is yours when you join before enrollment closes tomorrow at 5 p.m. Y'all, I have to run, but we are here to support you. You can send us an email, help at socialcurator.com. You can use the chat bot. Marie, I owe you. Send me a DM. I'll hit you up, girl, because I know you're here and I'm watching this clock, but I appreciate you. Let me know that you are the person. We'll get you connected. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all, I appreciate you. I hope you guys have a great and fantastic day. I have nothing but love and gratitude, and I would love to see you on the inside of Social Curator before enrollment closes. Mwah. Bye, friends.